Right guys, the time has come, the time has finally come for me to show you the biggest secret in praying mantis keeping... No, the, the biggest secret to show you... The time has come to show you... Oh god, I sound like... <coughs> right guys, the time has come to sh oh, The time has come? What do you mean the time is here? Right, I'm going to show you how to make these little enclosures that I do. That I get a million questions about. Right, okay. Hey there, gang. So, week in, week out, um, I get these comments on my videos saying, Oh, that's all great. That's lovely. But how do you make those little enclosures? You know, the ones, the little ones, the ones you use for everything. And I've said repeatedly, you know, I'll, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, I will show you how to make them. Um, they've evolved a lot when I first started making them, they look different to this. So here's one at the moment, it's a bit grubby, there's a sticker still on it. Um, I've got another one here, done a very slightly different style. And, you know, it looks a bit like a cricket box, and it is a cricket box. But it's not just a cricket box, it's... Like I say, the perfect way to keep your young prey mantis. There's a wee ghost. Now these are only big enough to keep small prey mantis in. Um, to medium-ish, I guess. Uh, but, you know, if you've got lots and lots of sort of medium nymphs that need to go and things, these are ideal because you don't want to be buying hundreds and hundreds of containers. Um, and when you breed prey mantis, which I'm sure a lot of you do, this is what you want. In fact, this is just, it's an easy enclosure if you just want to start up as well um, and it's using bits that a lot of people will have already so let's pop this little ghost back in go on you little slag go on get in there get in there get in um, when I first got the comment on uh, can you show us how to make these my thoughts were a bit you know it was either you know Show them, show them the secret, or my head was thinking, ah! mm. Don't tell them the secret. Don't tell them the secret! Ah! I was thinking, you can't have it, it's mine! You can't have it! Um, but then I thought, everyone should know how to make one of these enclosures. They're, they're nice little enclosures. So I'll show you what you need. I keep, why do I do oh. Right. So, first of all, what you'll need is cricket boxes with appropriate lids. So, there you go. Um, you got hundreds of bloody things. If you're keeping exotic animals, you get crickets, you know exactly what these are. You get one every time you buy any, and you end up with loads and loads of extra boxes. You might just throw them away, but I keep them. Oh, I've got a little tickly throat. Come on, label. We don't want you. Come on. Brilliant. Right. That's the first thing you need. Second thing, you need some way of cutting it. Um, obviously scissors, but they're not ideal for this because you're going to be cutting squares out of it. Oh, I've got another message. Maybe um, scalpel would be ideal. I'm going to use this Perspex cutter. Isn't ideal, but I'm too lazy to find my scalpel right now. So I recommend everything I do with this, you do with a scalpel. Because... This is a silly way of doing it. Um, you'll need a glue gun. I have a glue gun somewhere. Oh. Well, I say you need a glue gun. Any glue will do, as long as it's not going to be like horrendously toxic to the animal. Um, you give it a good time to dry. I mean, the reason I use these hot glue guns is because they stick well and they dry pretty quick. There's not really much, you know. Well, it's Gets the job done. Glue gun. Um, what else? There must be something else. Oh, yeah, I think the last thing. I say the last thing. Oh, God, I almost flipped my trousers. Is this mesh? Bug proof mesh. This is the one that the crickets can't chew through. I've got this one in black. The other ones have been in grey and silver. Doesn't matter what colour you choose. I get mine off eBay. It's cheap, cheap, cheap. I've got more mesh than I'll probably ever need here. Um, 
but that's where you make the little screen because don't forget your premises need lots of ventilation ventilation is the key let's begin done another little clap right let's start so the first thing you get your enclosure we're going to cut a rectangle out of this lid now the rectangle you want out of the lid preferably should be as wide as the um, as the tub itself you'll use that piece of plastic later I'll show you what for um, but first of all we're going to really roughly cut out a square you can use them you can use a ruler if you want it really lovely and accurate I'm not as bothered about having it looking perfectly straight as some might be um, there's your first couple of cuts once you're happy with it take this piece out do do it right now next thing going to get this check it's the right width perfect um, so when your enclosure is stood up right you need somewhere for the substrate to go so when you take the front off it's not just all going to jump out um, so what we will be doing is putting this like that however no praying mantis, well I say no praying mantis, not a lot of praying mantis are going to need that much substrate so we'll cut this down again I'm not being the most accurate I could be with this but just showing you just cut off the bottom corners destroying my table here but you know what hell almost got my thumb why not so here we have it you can take the label off again I can't be bothered now it's time to get the glue gun out that's one extra glue stick let's leave that to heat up Right, next, let's measure out some of this mesh. So, we want enough mesh just to overlap this little little square so we can glue it on. Now, I'm gonna use some scissors for this. These are Cara's scissors. She can't know. She'll say, you're gonna blunt my scissors. But I don't care. Perfect. I hope. That looks a bit accurate to me. Let's see if the glue gun's hot. Right. So the glue gun is hot. We go across the top. A little bit on the edges. A little bit down the bottom. Put another one of these sticks in. Again, I'm not being the most accurate I could be. Loads of glue. Oh, that's hot. It's a hot glue gun. I'm going to put that over the top. I'm going to use the end of the glue gun to press it in because the end of the glue gun obviously doesn't let the glue stick to it. That would be a silly glue gun.
Well, I've made a mess of that. Right, so that's the gist of it. Um, we can, when the glue's completely set, dry, uh, dry up, clean up any of these bits of glue that's sticking off. Like I say, I'm not doing this accurately, I'm just trying to get it done in on one video before I have to go back to work. Um, but yeah, there you go, that's the gist of it. There is a few little bits that can be pulled off, um, but that can all be repaired later. Let's get the next bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue on the inside here. Same on the other side. It's like that little extra piece of plastic we had. Right on in there, just glue around the base of it. So this is so much, why are you putting so much glue on? Because I'm a lazy man. I'm a lazy man, too much glue. What have I done? Alright, next I'm going to get another piece of mesh, a slightly different colour mesh but it's the same stuff. Um, this one, I'm just going to cut a strip, I'd, you can use all your odds and ends for this bit. Let's just go, uh, 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 uh. what we're going to do is we're going to glue a strip down the back and on the top, so it'll be sort of like that, it doesn't matter about any excess at the bottom, that way you can climb on this top bit, you can climb up the back wall. They tend to be able to climb quite well on these uh, little pre-cut grooves. So let's just get that glue gun, glue it in. One blob there, that'll be enough. One blob along the top. Ram that down there. Right, and you know what? That's essentially it. That should have mainly dried up. Let's put a bit of substrate in there. Obviously not on the back. Sits in that little cup there. Keep the humidity in. So, put a little stick in there. And then last but not least, let's get this little monkey and put him in there. Go on little monkey. Go on. There you are. Oh, that's nice. Can go over there. Nice. 
nice. Now when you want to give him a spray, you can spray through the mesh. Uh, it gives him the humidity from the substrate. He's got the airflow from having all the holes. These have also obviously got all these hundreds of tiny holes built in already. They stack up fine, you can have a line of them. Um, and you know, it's about as basic as you could possibly get for a, for a enclosure. However, when you've got lots and lots of young mantises, this is ideal to keep them in. Um, so I hope that's been some help. Um, you can stop pestering me now. Uh, stop pestering me. Why don't you stop? You can uh, you can stop you can stop pestering me now about it. About if you're saying about uh, how to make these little how do you, how do you make these little enclosures, eh? How'd you make how'd, how'd you make these little enclosures? How'd you do it? How'd you make them enclosures that you keep saying you're going to tell us about, but you stop telling us, and uh, then that's how you do it, and you don't have to. It's uh, you can stop pestering me now, like because um, that's how you do it over there. So I've showed you now, and you now know how to make them little enclosures there. That's this. That's how you make them enclosures there. Uh, you know now how to do it, and uh, so yeah. Alrighty then. <laughs> oh god, that is grim. Yeah, I hope that's been a help. Uh... Oh god, that made my face go red. Let's not do that again. Woohoo! Right, Tilly, bye bye!